My beloved Demo, I address you once again on the current crisis in our country. This is the third time I'm doing so in just one week. It underscores the importance my administration attaches to the safety of Ndimu and the peaceful Nigeria. My heart is gladdened to know that the vast majority of our people he did declare calls by both Mr. President, President Mohamed Buhari, and myself and the youths, the need for them to call off the NSAS protest, having laid down their points unmistakably. In my search for peace, I met a group of youths embedded in the NSAS protest across the nation. The group was made up of youth leaders from all parts of the country, comprising leaders from the National Youth Council of Nigeria, Ariwa Youths, Mohanese Ndibu Youths, Afenifre Youths, House of Lani Youths, Middle Belt and Niger Delta Youths, under the banner of Coalition of Ethnic Nationality Youth Leaders of Nigeria. My gospel to them was the same. You've made your point, and the relevant authorities have not only had, but are also taking necessary actions. End the protests and allow government to address your demands. I feel fulfilled that youth across the country in general, and Igbo State in particular, listening to the wise council and have done the needful. I want to use this opportunity to particularly salute my beloved Igbo youth for making me very proud indeed. I've always known that I can count on you at all times. For heeding to my advice and promptly calling off your peaceful protest, I want to commend you. You've demonstrated uncommon maturity and patriotism in a uniquely troubled time of our nation. I am very proud of you. Yet, duty still becomes on you. The task is not complete until every single youth is pulled off our streets and kept a safe distance away from the reach of some unscrupulous elements whose demonic desire to unleash endless carnage in some parts of the state. We must recognize that there are a few unrepentant and unpatriotic elements who will want to cash in on crisis situations to execute their wicked agenda of mayhem against our state. Often, they entice and recruit unsuspecting youth as willing tools for their destructive crusade. This is what they are doing now, and we must say no to them. Our youth must say no to them so that they don't dent, your, dent and soil your noble reputation as peace-loving youths. The gallant majority of peace-loving Nemo youths owe it a duty to stop these unpatriotic elements from manipulating a few youths who are still vulnerable to their antics. I charge you not to rest on your oars until no youth in Nemo State is available for hire by these masses of death and destruction. They are the avowed enemies of the peace and progress of our dear state, and they are on the prowl again. My esteemed Demo youth, you will recall that during my conversation with you, I assured you of a dedicated empowerment package as part of my administration's determination to address your needs. I am glad to announce to you, therefore, that my government has approved an immediate release of a takeoff 2 billion naira out of the 6 billion naira the amount for an accelerated youth employment program. The 2 billion naira takeoff fund will be deployed for the training of the first batch of the beneficiaries of this scheme, which will commence next week. The program will train in the first, second, and third batches 
an estimated number of 500,000 Igbo youths in different skill acquisition programs within the next two years and provide to, for them with startup capital to begin their own enterprises. Known as the Imo State Special Youth Empowerment and Intervention Program, the State's Ministry of Skill Acquisition and Entrepreneurship is directly charged with the immediate implementation of this scheme. A training timetable will be rolled out on Tuesday, October 27, 2020. In this regard, the 5,000 MOUs who have already been trained in different skills are to be given their startup capital. The Ministry will work out the details of this in addition to the timetable for other training sessions. I should, however, add that available intelligence reports at my disposal indicate that those behind the vicious going of police stations, courts, INEC offices, and local government headquarters in different parts of the state, they are not from Imo State. Every indication points to the fact that they are mercenaries hired to wreak havoc in this state. The sponsors of this mindless carnage are not far to fetch. Security operatives are on their trail. I am confident that sooner than later they will all be fished out and made to face the full wrath of the law. Let all those who mastermind the unprecedented carnage and wanting destruction of public and private property in the state be assured that they will not escape the long arm of the law. My esteemed Imo people, as the situation in the state and the country gradually returns to normal, it is necessary to begin to relax the curfew announced on Wednesday. Consequently, the coffee will now start from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day for now. However, those on approved essential services are exempted. Once again, I want to thank you, the good people of Imo State, for your understanding and your support during this trying period. May God bless Nigeria, may God bless Ndimo, may God bless our youth. Thank you.